do 4.4 or 4-4, um, we move from polynomials, exponents to prime factorization. We take a little step back because we're going to utilize this in a little bit. Um, finding LCM, so some of the words, factor, factor a number, that's to express a number as a product of other numbers. So if we want to rewrite 24, we could write it as 4 times 6, 3 times 8, 2 times 12. Uh, factor set are the set of numbers for which factors of a number are chosen. So we can have factor pairs and we can have the set of factors. So these are all the numbers that go into 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Uh, prime number, prime number has exactly two um, sets of factors, one and itself. So it starts with two. One is not because uh, one doesn't have two factors, it only has one. Prime factorization, which we're going to practice here, is very, very important. It's expressing the uh, term as a product of the prime, so it breaks all of its factors down into its prime numbers, hence why it's called prime factorization. GCF, greatest common factor, uh, factors, these are numbers, the greatest number that uh, can go into both of the two terms, or three terms, or four terms. LCM, least common multiple, um, is a multiple of, and it's the lowest of the multiples. So, lots of fun. We're going to do them with numbers and then variables, which I think is equally as important. So we take a number like 780, and it doesn't matter what your first two factor pairs are here. You can break them into anything. You could have broken them into three times, um, what do we have there? Uh, that's going to be two, what's that, 260? Is that 260? Uh, 18, Six, seven, yeah. So you could have broken it into three and 260. You could have broken it into two and 390. We would just, that's a prime number. And then we break 260 to like 26 and 10. And then we break 26 into two and 13, 10 into two and five. And you'd still get uh, two and 13. You'd still get the same factor pairs. Uh, I like leaving it like this. I don't tend to write it in exponential form unless they mandate it. I like it in its native form, um, and I would write it in uh, uh, in increasing in uh, order. Um, and I wonder if I write it in least to smallest or smallest to least. We'll see as I go. But it doesn't matter how you break it up. You're going to end up with the same numbers at the end. That's the nice thing. So 84, I'm going to break it into 2 and 42. I circle the 2 just as a visual reminder. 2 and 21. 2 is a prime number, so that's the other reason why I'm circling. I wouldn't circle it if I could still break it down. And 21 is 3 and 7. Both of those are prime numbers, so I'm going to write the prime factorization of that is 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. Um, you could have broken 84 into 4 and 21. Now, I wouldn't circle 4 because it's not a prime number, so I would need to break it down some more. So if I don't circle it, that just means that I can still break it down. And we notice that we end up with the same numbers. Notice I'm not using commas to separate those numbers because uh, we're showing that it's a product of those would produce 84. There's no correct way or order on which ones you do, you, it's just the end answer needs to be the same. So I'm going to do 6, and we get 21. 6 is not prime. 2 and 3, 21, 3 and 7. So my prime factorization is this. And this is going to help me again. I don't write them in exponential because I'm going to use it for LCM and GCF. Uh, we'll do 36 and 10. 36 is 6 and 6. 6 is 2 and 3. 6 is 2 and 3. 10 is 2 and 5. And now I'm going to write them in numerical order. 
and that's my prime factorization. 29 is prime, so it, has, it is in its prime factorization. Ooh, 616, oh, let's do two, let's keep it simple, well, simple-ish, shall we say. Let's do two, and that's 154, and let's do, um, let's do two, 77, and seven and 11. So we get two times two times two times seven times 11. I think that's correct, 616. Let's do, that's eight times seven is 56. Ooh, yeah times 11, 616. And it takes two seconds to check. Uh, I'll let that, three, six, seven, I think 133, 13, no. Uh, so I think of divisibility rules, what numbers produce three is three, nine produces a three as the units I think that those are the only two numbers that produce, oh, seven, so I'd try seven. So, uh, one, three, three, divided by seven, 19. Mm -hmm. So, uh, seven and 19, so the prime factorization, seven times 19. So I'm just going through my digits zero through nine, and I'm seeing what, could they produce? So if we use this, watch this. Let's do this times table. Times table. So a, whoops, a times table. Let's do images. Um, let's have a nice relatively, that's up to 10. No, well, that's okay. 10 would be fine. It should be enough. So if we do the 10 times tables, let's take this table. Oh, that didn't work. Why can I not get... There you go. So if we take that and plop it in here. So we look and see two... Let's, let's actually move this. So if we look at this, twos only produce... Numbers that end with two, four, six, eight, and zero. There's no multi or no uh, multiple of two that would produce a seven. So we know. So what I was looking for was what numbers end in three. Well, okay, multiples of three. Multiples of three have a number that ends in three, and that would be the only one. What else would end in a three? Nothing. No multiple of four ever ends in a three. No multiple of five, six, and then we have seven. And I was thinking of 63 was the only one, and then nine, and, and that's it, actually. Oh, isn't that interesting? Those are the only numbers that would ever end in a three. Huh. So there you have it. So that's why I was trying three, nine, and seven. Yeah, isn't that good? That's pretty good, Mr. Mac. Okay. Uh, find the prime factorization of this number. So let's, uh, do we want half, seven, uh, two, eight is uh, three, six, four. Uh, let's do four, because I know that's going to be 91. 91? 91. 91. What ends in 91? Well, seven, seven, seven goes into it. Again, here's that nasty little seven uh, goes in 13 times, and that's it. So, two, oh, hello, four. You see me circling four? That was bad. Four is not a prime number. So I have two times two times two times two times seven times 13. So that's going to give me 16. No, sorry. 16 times 7 equals 112 times 13, 1456. Good.
and I'm just checking, making sure that that is correct. And no number here is a composite number. All of these numbers in this box are prime numbers. 29, 25. Well, we know that 25 is going to go into it. Uh, and divisibility rules are super important. So 25 goes into 29 one time with 425. And if you had $4.25, I think you'd have 17 quarters. So 25 is 5 times 5, and 17 is prime. So 5 times 5 times 17 would be the prime factorization of that. All right, now it says, how do we use GCF and LCM? So if I have 60 and uh, find the GCF of, uh, what are the numbers? So, oh, 60, 72, and 84. Sorry, I wasn't reading the question. So if I find the GCF, first of all, doesn't matter if I use GCF or LCM, I'm always going to do the prime factorization. So let's take the time to do that. 6 and 10, that's 2 and 3, that's 2 and 5. 2 and 3. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to write the number here, and then I'm going to write its prime factorization. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So this is the example of why I keep it in its strung out. I don't write it as an exponent. 72 is 8 and 9. 8 is 2 and 4, 4 is 2 and 2, 9 is 3 and 3. So 72 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 84 is 4 and 21, 4 is 2 and 2, 21 is 3 and 7. So 84 is going to be 2, 2, 3, and 7. So I'm going to use this to find my GCF, and then I'm going to use it also to find my LCM. So let's move these. I may have to, uh, let's group, and I may have to copy it. Copy, and I'm going to paste it for my LCM later. So we'll do GCF first, I think is what they said. Let's erase that. Let's do a G C F. So when I see G C F, I think of circle the common. And if we want to find the G C F, we're going to circle what they have in common. So looking at the three prime factorization, I see they have a two in common. And then I see they have another two in common. And I see they have a three in common. And that's it. That's all they have in common amongst the three. So the greatest common factor would be 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. So the GCF of those three numbers is 12. And we look at the work up in the top, and we see that the GCF is 12. Notice how I found the 2 squared and the 3. And I do that accurately. I know 100% that I am correct. That's kind of cool. Nice, easy way. B is going to be the LCM. Now, these letters, I still have the C for circle the common. I'm going to do that first. So let's circle what they have in common again. We have that. We have the 2, like we said. We have the 2. We have the 3. Now, the other part of this problem is... Sorry, going to sneeze. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> L reminds me about the leftovers. And that's what differentiates greatest common factor from least common, uh, least common multiple are the leftovers. What do you mean leftovers? Well, these are the leftovers. So we have those four numbers as leftovers. So my LCM is going to equal what they have in common, common, times what they have left over, which is a 2, a 3, a 5, and a 7. These are the leftovers. So 
What does that total up to? That's uh, going to be 12, and that's going to be 30, 210. So 210 times 12, 210 times 12 gives me 2520. 25, 25, 20 should be my LCM. Let's take a peek. Let's take a look. See, 25, 20. Yeah. So that is the easiest way to find the GCF and LCM. I am always going to do that using that technique. Sound good? All right. So let's do it from the get-go. First of all, we're going to find the prime factorization. I keep touching 30. 30 gets broken into 3 and 10. 10 gets broken into 2 and 5. So my LCM of, or my LCM, my prime factorization of 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. Always put them in numerical order. That's 5 and 11. Those are both prime. So 55, 5 times 11. So if I'm going to find the GCF, A is GCF. This is nice, actually using in this fashion. Uh, the only thing that they have in common is a 5. So the GCF is going to be 5. When we find the LCM, remember, it's what they have in common and then what they have as leftovers. So they have a 2 leftover, a 3 leftover, and 11. 2, 3, 11 for the leftovers. C is what they have in common. So that is going to simplify to, that's 30. Uh, 30 times 11 is 330. Three, yeah, so GCF equals 5. LCM is 330. Super easy. 54 gets broken into 2 and 27. 27 gets broken into 3 and 9. 9 gets broken into 3 and 3, and my prime factorization of 54 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. That's good. 90. 90 gets broken into 9 and 10. 9 gets broken into 3 and 3. 10 gets broken into 2 and 5. So my prime factorization of 90 is going to be uh, 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So my GCF, circle what they have in common. They have a 2 in common. They have a 3 in common. They have a second 3 in common. So my GCF is going to be 2 times 3 times 3, <clears throat> which equals 18. Now when I find my LCM, I'm going to know that it's my common, so I know, whoops, 3, 3, I could have written 18 there, times my leftovers. What are my leftovers? What do I have left over after I circle the commons? I have 3 times 5. So that's 18 times 15. 15 times 18, which gives me 270. So my 270. That is my common multiple of 54 and 90, and it's the least of them. There are an infinite number of common multiples between 54 and 90, but this is going to be the least common multiple and the greatest common factor. Greatest common factors will be equal to or less than the two numbers, and the LCM will be greater than or equal to the two numbers. 66, 6 and 11, 6 and broken into 2 and 3. So 66 is 2 times 3 times 11. 110 is going to be 10 times 11. 10 is 2 and 5. And 11, 110 is 2 times 5 times 11. Uh, G, C, F. Circle what they have in common. They have a 2 in common. They have an 11 in common. 
2 times 11, which equals 22. 22 is the largest number that goes into 66 and 110. Um, B is going to be LCM. The C is what they have in common, so the 2 and the 11. And then the leftovers. The leftovers are 3 and 5. So that's 22 times 15. 22 times 15. That's going to be 165 doubled is 3 something. 15 times 22. 330. So 330 is the first multiple that 66 and 110 have. Ooh, neg okay. Okay, now this is an interesting question because I wanted to see what they did. I have, I've, I, I can be honest with you, I have never, ever seen a negative number with uh, asking for the, um, for the GCF and LCM. So I will be honest with you, um, I was interested to see what these answers are going to be. <clears throat> I can make an assumption I can think about it logically about multiples. So uh, when we got to these negatives, I wanted to see what they were going to say about it. So they're going, all right, all right, I see it. So let's do um, GCF and LCM. So, uh, or let's do prime factorization, sorry. Prime factorization is going to be 5 and 4 and 9, 49, fives prime, 49 is 7 times 7. So that's super easy. 2, 4, 5 is 5 times 7 times 7. Now here's the interesting, negative 385. So I have a negative 1. Now, see, I don't think that's a prime number. So what do we do with that negative is really interesting. Uh, and then 385, and then we have 5. And 5 goes into that 70, uh, 35, oh, 77? Is that true? Yeah. And 77 is 7 and 11. So I'm going to say the prime factorization of 385 is going to be negative 1 times 5 times 7 times 11. So this is where we're going to check and see. So I'm getting this is number 12. So if we're going to do GCF, that's relatively easy because they have to have in common. Well, let's make those equals just because of that negative there. So what do they have in common? They don't have a negative one in common, that's for sure. And they only have a five and a seven. So five times seven so the LCM or the GCF is going to be 35. And that's what the book says. So I get that. We're cool with that. I don't have a problem with that. It's the LCM that is where I, where it's an interesting thing. So, um, and I can see the logic behind it. We'll get there. All right. So now if it's the common, 5 times 7, and then the leftovers, and this is where the tough part is, 7 and 11 is left over, and then we have this negative 1. So I understand why they wouldn't include the negative, and I'll, I'll explain it once we get this number. So that's uh, 35 times 77, 35 times 77 gives us 26.95. 2695. Let's see what the answer key says. 2695. And notice it's positive. And the reason being is multiples move in that direction towards positive infinity. So if we're at negative 385, the next multiple, I mean, right? What's the next multiple of that? Would it be zero and then 385? And then uh, 385 times 2, which is 6, 7, um, 0, 770. And then would it be, um, oh, yeah, then would it be 
um, uh, 5, 7, 14, 15, 11, 55, and then et cetera, would it keep going? So those multiples would not go towards negative. And then 245, multiples of 245, 245, then we have 490, then we have uh, 5, 3, 735, et cetera until we get to 2695. So that's why if we're moving in multiples, we're always going to be moving towards positive infinity. So we'd never be a negative unless both numbers were negative. So I get it. Understand how that works? Hopefully you do. Uh, now we have three terms, which is good. And we should always start, we should start with two and then move towards three. Um, because there are certain situations that happen here. So prime factorization is super easy. A is GCF. What do they have in common? What do they have in common? Nothing. So when they have nothing in common, they know that the GCF is going to be 1. Because each of those have, uh, they, that's the common factor. 1 goes into them. 1's not prime, so it didn't work for the prime factorization, but that's how we're going to do it. LCM, since they have nothing in, or they have one in common, right? You can say the one. Uh, and then what are the leftovers? So the leftovers are going to be each of the numbers themselves. So 2 times 5 times 13, which equals 130. So that's going to be the LCM of those two. But that's not the tricky one. Uh, yeah, this will be tricky. This will be a good one. So 5 prime factorization is easy. 6, you get so good that you don't even have to do the factor tree. You should start getting really good at these. So, uh, yes, this will be good. So this is a really good problem. A is GCF. So this is where we find what is the greatest common factor. What do they have in common? They don't have anything in common. So again, my GCF is going to be 1. Now my LCM. LCM. So we have the common of 1. And then the leftovers. So leftovers, I went independently. So 5, 3. But this counts as 1. These are individual. So if you can find where they share amongst two. If they share amongst three, we take three. If they share only two, we take those two. So we're gonna have two times two times two times three times five. So that's gonna be my LCM, which is eight times 15. I should know eight times 15. And if I thought about it, I'd come up with 120. 120, okay. Uh, we're going to keep doing more because I want you to see these little intricacies between these. So 2 times 3, 10 is 2 times 5, 14 is 2 times 7. All right. So A, G, C, F, what do they have in common? They have the 2 in common. So the G, C, F is 2, B, L, C, M which is the common, the two, times the leftovers. And we have those as my leftovers, three times five times seven. So my LCM is gonna equal six times 35. Six times 35, which is 210. So 210 will be my LCM. All right, here's a good one. Hopefully this is a good one, 36. 36, I know the prime factorization. How did you know it was 2 times 2 times 3 times 3? Because it's 6 times 6. And I know that 6 gets broken into 2 times 3, and I have two 6s. 40. 40 is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, times 10, which is 2 times 5. So doing prime factorizations actually can get super easy. So we have... 10 times 9. 10 is easy. 2 times 5. 9 is 3 times 3. And I just have to focus on getting them in numerical order. So A is 
G, C, F, G, C, F. The C stands for circle, what they have in common. They have a two in common. That's it. G, C, F is two. How crazy is that? It feels like it's more, but it's not. It's just two. No other number goes into 36, 40, and 90. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Yeah, it's correct. And B is going to be LCM. This is where it gets fun. So we have the common, which is 2, and now we have to look for the leftovers. Now the leftovers, this is where it's important. So this happens in 2, so we can circle it. This happens in 2, we can circle it. And here's the weird one. So these two share those. That three is shared amongst those, and then that two left over there. So can you keep track of them? So one of these two, a two, a three, a three, and a five. You gotta practice this and get good at it, or else you're going to not see those. So that's gonna be uh, four, oh, that's a large, uh, that's 10, that's nine, 90, that's 180, 180 is 360. 360, 360, pretty sure that's what it is. That's four times six times 15, oh shoot, sorry. Four times six times 15 gives me 360, nice. All right, now we get variables. You think, hey, variables, harder, no. It's actually easier. The prime factorization of 12xy, you're gonna take the 12 and break that down. Two and six, two and three, and then we're gonna break down the variables. We just write x times y. So the prime factorization of 12xy is two times two times three times x times y. Let's do the prime factorization of 15 xy squared, 15xy squared. So that's gonna be three times five. We can do the coefficient, and then we break up the xy squared, x times y times y. Yeah, as easy as that. So a is gcf, and we just do the same thing. What do they have in common? They have a three in common. They have an x in common. So See how variables are actually easier? So the GCF is going to be 3 times x times y, or 3xy. B, L, C, M. So it's going to be what they have in common, which we've already done. 3 times x times y, times the leftovers. Leftover is 2, 2, 5, and a y. 2, 2, 5, and and a y. So my LCM is going to be, uh, that's 20, 4 times 5 is 20, times 3 is 60, and we have xy squared. There it is. Easiest thing you can think of. 49pq squared is 7 times 7 times p times q times q. 56 Q cubed, 56 is seven times eight. So two times two times two times seven times Q times Q times Q. Eight, you should know it's prime factorization. You're gonna get better at this the more you do it. G, C, F, what do they have in common? They have a seven in common. They have a Q in common. They have a second Q in common. So 7Q, Q, which gives us 7Q squared is our greatest common factor. But the largest number that is divisible into both of those terms. LCM is going to include the common multiple, what they have in common, times what they have left over. Now that's a lot of stuff. So that's two times two times two, which is eight times P. Oh, sorry, 
if I got a seven there, times seven times P times Q. So that seven times eight is 56 times seven. 56 times seven gives me 392. What a weird number, 392. 392 um, P Q cubed. Yeah, 392, 392, good. What one was that? That was 18. 18, 392 P Q cubed, yes. Oh, here's our negative again. So, negative 55 five M N cubed gives us negative one times five times 11 times M times N times N times N. I'm gonna move you over a little bit. 85, 85 doesn't come to M squared N squared. So 85 is gonna be, is that 17 times five? 17 times five, not two Mr. Mac, times five. 85, so 17 times five, so five times 17 times M times M times N times N. G, C, F, common factor. What do they have in common? They have a five in common. They have an M in common. They have an N and a second N. So it is going to be five times M times N times N, which equals 5mn squared is going to be my greatest common factor. My LCM is going to be what they have in common, which is the 5mnn, and then what they have left over. Leftovers are going to be 17, 11, m, and n. 11, 17, m, and n. Whoa. So that's 55 times 17. 55 times 17 gives us this big ugly 935. 935 m squared n cubed. There you go. So it becomes really straightforward where you're finding this two times three times seven because six times seven is 42 times X times Y and negative 70 Y Z is negative one times set oh, no times two times five times seven times Y times Z. So you do it enough times and GCF greatest common factor. They have a two in common, they have a seven and a Y. So we can start seeing these really quickly, which is 14 Y. And then our LCM, sorry, C, which is 14 Y times the leftovers. We have a three, a five, an X, and a Z. Three, five, X, Z. And that produces uh, 14 times 15. 14 times 15 gives us 210. 210XYZ. XYZ, yeah. Cool. Uh, still two numbers 60A squared BC. So that's two times two times three times five times A times A times B times C. 280 is gonna be a little bit more involved, but that's what well, that's 28 and 10, that's uh, four and seven, that's two and two, that's two and five. So two times two times two times five times seven times A times A times A times B times B. GCF, they have a two in common. That's not the color I wanted. They have a two in common. 
They have another two in common. They have a five in common. They have an A in common. They have a second A in common. They have a B in common. So two times two times five times A times A times B, which produces 20 A squared B. LCM common is going to equal 20 A squared B. And now let's do the leftovers. Leftovers, we have a two, a three, a seven, an A, a B, and a C. So two, three, seven, A, B, C. And that's gonna produce, what's that? Six, 42, 42, 8, 40, A cubed, B squared, C. Yes. No calculators. Look at that. 108 P Q R squared. Uh, that's nine times nine, right? Nine times nine, which is three times three times three times three times P times Q times R times R. 144, also a perfect square. P squared, Q, R squared. Seven times, no, 12 times 12, hello. That's uh, 12 times 12. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of twos. I think that's what it is, right? 12, so that's, uh, that's 6, 6, 36 times 4. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to use a calculator. P times P times Q times R times R. Uh, what did we do? 12 times 12, right? So that's, yeah, that was good. Uh, A is G, C, F. Circle what they got in common. No twos. They have one, three. They have a second three. They have a P. They have a Q. And they have two R's. That's a lot. So three times three times P times Q times R times R, which gives us a total of nine P Q R squared. No way you see that just looking at it. This is the beauty of how easy and efficient using this technique, technique nine P Q R squared. And now let's multiply the leftovers. Uh, three, three, two, 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 P, and that's it. So we have two times two times two times two times three times three times P, which gives us a total of, what's that, 16 times nine, 16 times 81, 16, 16 times 81, Gives us 1296, 1296, and we have P squared, Q, R squared. Yes, 100% certain on that. Yes, we're here. R, S gives you 2 times 5 times R times S. 12 R, S, T gives you 2 times 2 times 3 times R times S times T. 14 R squared S T squared. 2 times 7 times R times R times S times T times T. GCF, what do they have in common? They have a 2 in common. They have an R in common. They have an S in common, and that's it, 2RS. So the largest number that is divisible into those three terms are 2RS. LCM is going to include the 2RS that wasn't in blue, the 2RS times the leftovers, which is a 5, a 2, a 3, a 7, no R, they share a T, and they have a leftover T. So 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 
times R times T times T. And you notice that the order and the way that I do it helps me not for, uh, forget one of these. No term gets hidden. A couple of reasons. I write clearly. I write organized. And I am systematic about my approach in how I go through the numbers, then the variables. So we have 6 times 35. 6 times 35 gives us 210, gives us 420 times 2, 420. And then we have R squared S T squared. That's easy. All right. Are we done? Not done. I don't know how many more. 26XY is 2 times 13 times X times Y. 39XZ is 3 times 13 times X times Z. And 65YZ equals 5 times 13 times Y times Z. G, C, F. Common is going to be a 13, and that's it. So 13 is my greatest common factor. My LCM is going to equal that common times the leftovers. 2, 3, 5. We can do an X. They have both of those. They both have a Z. And then... Yeah, sorry, I was almost going to circle those independently. Sorry, let's do this. Let's do this. And then these share a Y. That's kind of important. So we have 2 times 3 times 5 times X times Y times Z, which simplifies to 630. 30 is 39 XYZ. No. That was wrong. Oh, I forgot to. I, I forgot to multiply it by 13. Sorry. Uh, that is 30. Oh. Oh, I forgot the zero. 390, maybe. That's 390. 390 XYZ. And the reason why I knew it couldn't be 39, because 39 is not a multiple of 26. But just 390, 390 divided by 26, is that 15? Oh, look at me. Yep. Boom. All right. Really good worksheet. So important. These are things we continue to go over, things that are so contingent on being successful in any algebra, algebra 2, pre-calc, calc. calc. These are the core foundational skills that are so necessary that you should master by the time you get out of eighth grade. Take the time. Good luck.